The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After hearing his doctorate, many of the followers of Jesus said, This is intolerable language. How could anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his followers were complaining about it and said, Does this upset you? What if you would see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh has nothing to offer. The words I have spoken to you are spirit. They are life. But there are a few of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew this from the outset, those who do not believe, and who it was that would betray him. He went on, This is why I told you that no one could come to me unless the Father allows him. After this, many of his disciples left him and stopped going around with him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, What about you? Do you want to go away too? Simon Peter answered, Lord, who shall we go to? You have the message of eternal life, and we believe. We know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the last 18 months, we've been watching on the news hospitals filled with people filled to the brim with people with COVID, in some countries with the people just waiting outside and in corridors because there's no room for them in the hospitals. It's been a terrible thing to see. Yet in the midst of it, I've been aware of another reality and that is medical staff, doctors and nurses and other workers within hospitals and in aged care places working so hard, worn out completely and I remember watching something, it must have been from the BBC in England at the time, someone saying, I don't know that I can do this anymore. It's too much for me. I just can't cope. And yet somehow this person continued to cope. Our medical system has been overwhelmed to such an extent that we look upon our medical staff as absolute heroes because in the midst of all these things, they found the strength to continue in their work in a way that I'm sure when they, look, when they will look back on it one day, they won't understand how they were able to do it. They won't understand why they continued, and yet they did. And they still continue to work all over the world for the people that are suffering COVID, for the people that are dying from it. In today's gospel, we have that wonderful moment when at the end of chapter 6 Jesus has been talking about the Eucharist. He's been talking in these words, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man you cannot have life. And all the people are struggling with what he's saying. They say, we can't believe this, we don't know what you're talking about. And so they drop off one by one until at the end of this the picture that we have is all the people that we're, they're listing, they've all gone away, they've all deserted Jesus. And there's a small group, his disciples, and he turns to them and says, what about you? Are you going to go away too? And Peter says these words, Lord, who shall we go to? You have the message of eternal life and we believe. We know that you are the Holy One of God. Let's, before we see, understand what Peter says, turn to this group of disciples and wonder what they're thinking and feeling. I'm sure they're thinking and feeling like everyone else. What was he talking about? We don't understand it. He's speaking such difficult things. And I'm sure some of them have in their mind, I think I'm off too. I'm not going to stay with him given he said these strange things, these things that I don't understand. And they're all there wondering, will I stay or will I go? And he turns to Peter, who's also wondering these things, and says, what are you going to do? And I'm quite sure he looks Peter in the eyes. And Peter looks back at Jesus and he can't leave. 
He can't go. And he says these amazing things. I think what Peter says in the experience of Peter and the other 12 is so similar to the experience of others. I'm sure it's similar to your experience as well, not even in COVID times. Why do you keep coming back to the church? Why are you watching this mass online when you don't have to? Why? What are you looking for? When in the recent history of the church, there are so many reasons to go away and desert the church, as many people have done. And I will not judge those that in these difficult circumstances, in the terrible scandals which which have abounded, not simply for the church, but everywhere in society. Why do people continue to believe in society, in the church? Why do people continue to believe in others and in each other? Well, the reason that they're inclined not to is because of what they're thinking. That's what's happening in today's gospel. That was what the nurses were struggling with as I watched the BBC News last year. I don't think I can cope with this. As I think about it, it's not possible. And yet somehow you and those nurses and so many others have found the possibility to continue to believe to continue to believe in each other, to continue to believe in life, to continue to believe that you have a place in all of this, to continue to believe that you have a place in the church, to continue to believe in something that your mind is telling you, ah, like it was for the 12, I'm out of here. So we need to reflect upon this reality today. What's it telling us? This is why I told you that no one could come to me unless the Father allows him. No one can believe, no one can find their place except that this is the work of God already present in you. How do you believe in love when your understanding of love has been dashed so many times? This is the history. This is the reality of what is to be human. And yet you continue to believe in love, don't you? You continue to commit yourself to love to each other. Why? Why? Because somehow the work of God places within us that ability to accept and to remain when we can find no reason to do so. When things get difficult, Why do we stay? Because this is, I believe, one of the fundamental works of the Holy Spirit that makes this possible. It's the Spirit that gives life, that Jesus says. The flesh has nothing to offer. The words I've spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Today's Gospel says, then look within yourselves and recognise that part of who you are that you cannot account for, that you cannot understand. Why? Why do you persevere? Why do you remain? And as you experience that mysterious part of yourself, know that that is God within you. And turn to God from within yourself, from that place of mystery, because each of us carries as Simon Peter and the Twelve did in today's Gospel, the mystery of God, the mystery of that relationship. We all have that, and in difficult times we have it even more powerfully. Go and ponder today's Gospel and give thanks to God that you are watching this Mass in this difficult time.